Let's talk about single party rule for a moment. Some critics describe it as all accelerator and no brakes. There are fears that perhaps an unbridled, unchecked, filibuster-proof Democratic majority will overreach and, and move the country too far to the left. How can you assuage people's concerns about that? Well, uh, look, I mean, first of all, I think it's important to point out that the critics who make this claim are Republicans. Right, but even <laughs> are, one, are, but, you know, against one I party rule. I understand, but the, the, they weren't making those same complaints <laughs> uh, a few years ago. Uh, on the other hand, we've seen uh, the example of a Republican Congress and President overreaching. And, and, and a and, Democratic and, one in the Clinton administration. And, and so I think the, the, the concerns are legitimate. Look, uh, uh, the benefit of having a Democratic President and a Democratic Congress would be that hopefully you could actually move on some big issues like energy or health care that have been sitting there for decades and we know they're huge problems. We know we've got to change how we do business there, but uh, we just haven't been able to round up the consensus to get it done. The flip side of it is that uh, if Democrats come in uh, and say to themselves, it's our turn and we're just going to go crazy doing whatever it is that we feel like, uh, I think they'll, their majority won't last very long. The Economist, while endorsing you, has also said there are some legitimate criticisms of you that John McCain should be focused on. They say that you are one of the least business-friendly Democratic candidates in a generation, that you have no experience in the business world aside from one year as a consultant, and that you're too close to unions and trial lawyers. Well, it is The Economist. And the fact that they endorsed me, how about reading all the good stuff they said about me? <laughs> well, that's in another <laughs> issue. <laughs> that's later. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, I think there's a reason why people like Warren Buffett have endorsed me. Uh, I, I think that if you look actually at our uh, business support, uh, it's pretty remarkable. People like Eric Schmidt, the head of Google, uh, who ha have said that, uh, you know, I understand how the global economy works, how we have to adapt to a new 21st century competitive environment. Now what is also true is that I think our economy works best when it grows from the bottom up when everybody's benefiting. And that's one of the lessons, I think, of the last 16 years. We really had an experiment. We had Bill Clinton, uh, who was uh, you know, accused of you know, raising taxes on business and so forth. But in fact, what happened was the whole economy grew at every sector, and businesses did well because their customers were doing well. On the other hand, you had George Bush, who figured, let's cut taxes for the wealthiest Americans, let's deregulate uh, to the hilt. And you know, what we now see is that when Main Street is hurting, when its wages and income isn't going up, then businesses are hurt as well. So I actually think that uh, the, the, the approach that I take is very business friendly. I, I think that uh, capitalism and the free market uh, is the, the best economic system ever devised to create wealth. Uh, but I also think that there have to be some basic rules of the road. Uh, and uh, you know, we have learned that lesson uh, during this latest financial crisis. What are you most afraid of on Election Day? You know, I have to say that I, I feel uh, pretty good about the fact that our campaign has done, has made it as good of a case for change as I think we could have. I mean, I have been a highly imperfect candidate, uh, but our campaign as a whole, I think, has, uh, has delivered on its promise to reach out to people who hadn't been involved in politics, to go into places that hadn't traditionally looked at a Democratic candidate. Uh, but ultimately, it comes down to a bunch of people uh, making their own individual decisions in that ballot box. And so I'm sure what I'll feel is... Uh, uh, great interest in terms of how it turns out. Great interest. Great interest. Come on. A little bit of anxiety. Aren't you going to be a nervous wreck? Uh, you know, uh, I am sure that I won't be sleeping uh, in on Tuesday morning. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Or maybe not sleeping much on Monday night. <laughs> That's exactly right. There's been a debate about the Bradley effect, which, as you know, in essence, is when some respondents lie to pollsters and say, sure, we'd vote for an African-American candidate, but on Election Day, they just don't do it. 
A lot of people say it's a phenomenon that's outdated, overstated, um, and misunderstood. Having said that, do you think we'll see evidence of that on Election Day? You know, I have to tell you, I, I'm in the camp that says it's outdated and overstated. I mean, the fact of the matter is that uh, people have been worrying and fussing about uh, whether or not uh, I'm hampered because I'm an African American since we were campaigning in Iowa. Uh, the reason I'm sitting here two days before election uh, as the Democratic nominee is because the American people ultimately care about whether or not you can do the job. The Pennsylvania Republican Party is starting to run an ad in that state which features your former minister, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, saying, quote, God damn America. Do you think they would have run that ad without the approval of the McCain campaign? Uh, I think the McCain campaign has generally been pretty restrained on that front, and I think they deserve some credit for that. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I, I don't know there's anybody in America who hasn't seen those videos that they're running. Uh, I don't think that's what the American people are thinking about right now. What is the biggest mistake you think your campaign has made? You know, I, I, I've got to tell you, the mistakes that we made were mine and mine alone. Uh, my, my team has just been rock solid. Uh, I, I'm so What's the biggest mistake you made then? Uh, well, I think it, it was that, uh, the, the, that bitter comment in uh, the fundraiser. Only because the, the irony was that what I was trying to describe was uh, that Democrats hadn't reached out to people and had allowed themselves to get trapped in these you know, uh, social wedge issues and divisions. And it ended up being exhibit A of Democrats uh, saying something that, uh, that made people feel like they were uh, uh, being insulted. And I think it, it, was, uh, it was a stupid mistake on my part. And, uh, but you know what, uh, over the course of two years, you know, hopefully you get better over time. What did the McCain team do in the course of this campaign that made you the angriest? You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I, a, a lot of the stuff that has made me angry hasn't directly come from the McCain campaign. I mean, I, I do think that there is a, um, there is a Republican or right, uh, uh, right wing uh, media outlet, uh, set of media outlets that went after my wife for a while in a way that I thought was, uh, just completely out of bounds, uh, and and I, you know, frankly, I, you know, I would have never cons considered or expected my allies to uh, do something comparable to the spouse of an opponent. Uh, I just feel like family is uh, are civilians. Yeah, they don't sign up for this stuff. They support their their spouse, uh, but generally, you know, they're really should be bystanders in this process, even if they're campaigning for you. Be, you know, they're saying nice things about, uh, about uh, their, their, in this case, their husbands. I mean, that's what you expect, and, uh, and that doesn't make them suddenly targets. If things go your way on Tuesday, and you become this nation's first African-American president, what will that mean to you personally? There are times where you're shaking hands after a rally, and you look out over the crowd, and uh, people are telling you their stories. I just lost my job, or uh, my wife has ovarian cancer, but she's out there campaigning for you. Or, you know, my son, uh, for the first time, has decided that he wants to uh, really apply himself to school because he was inspired by what you're doing. Or you, you, you hear those stories, and you know what you feel is just this enormous sense of obligation and responsibility to really just work your heart out uh, for folks because because um, they're investing a lot obviously there's a historic dimension when you know a 90 year old african-american woman just grabs my hand and won't let go and says you know i am so proud you know you think about what an african-american woman's gone through over the course of a 90-year life and uh and that will move you deeply. But it's not just uh, a, uh, a sense of, of uh, the history made because of race. It's, it, there is also just a, uh, this overwhelming feeling of 
humility and gratitude that, that where you say, boy, I really, I better come through for folks if I win this thing, because um, they really need it.